Hi, I'm Gartasia. I've dated and interviewed over 100 women, and I help players and men who don't get no play attract high-quality women by being 100% authentically themselves. In this video, I will show you how no fap, that's right, no fap, <laughs> no nut November, don't beat your meat, semen retention, whatever you want to call it. I will tell you how no fap actually negatively impacted my life and how it actually repelled high-quality women instead of attracted them. What if I told you a man was laying in bed with a drop dead gorgeous, fully naked bombshell of a model, and he had to watch together with her just to get it up. A few things might come to mind. You might think, okay, he's probably a middle-aged man, probably has a couple grandkids, at least probably 50 plus, struggling from erectile dysfunction, and probably has a stash of Viagra bigger than his retirement fund. You might imagine how the woman felt. You might imagine how he felt. What if I told you it wasn't a 50-year-old boomer and it was actually a healthy, viral 19-year-old pumping with testosterone and horniness? What if I told you that that person was me? <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's how bad it was. I'm sure you're probably wondering how it got here, so let me tell you. It was winter of 2016, and I was on top of the world. I had finally got my own place. I had finally moved far, far away from my parents to campus. I had finally acquired the social circle of my dreams, and most importantly, I finally had a girlfriend. Also, fun fact, I had just lost my V-car a couple weeks ago, so the only thing on my mind was SEX. It was new, it looked cool, it felt good, and most importantly, it was a challenge. And as a highly competitive 19 year old with adrenaline and testosterone pumping through his veins, I fully accepted that challenge to become the best person on my campus at sex. Um, how to prove that is a whole different story that I didn't fully think through, but that didn't stop me from accepting the task. Luckily for me, me and my girlfriend at the time were in the iconic honeymoon phase, so there was no shortage of sex. I'm talking about on the floor, on the top bunk of my bunk with my roommate in the room while he sleep and the ceiling was like a foot away so that killed like a lot of positions um not to get into detail uh, all that 50 shades of gray shit but i'm talking about in the student lounge one time we even kept at it during a fire alarm like blaring like a thousand decibel fire alarms and we looked at each other and then we looked outside the window and then we looked at each other again it was like nah <laughs> can't catch us all and literally they go door by door to knock and make sure nobody's there we just like lock the door turn the lights out and just like kept going at it anywho i was a wild little thingy thing but something about the element of danger just added to the hotness of it like it was hot it was like habanero pepper hot i ain't even gonna lie to this day to this day i don't know if i can top that but anywho yeah it was a wild ride I felt like Spider-Man when he just discovered he could web sling and he's just like this montage of him just like web slinging from buildings, doing like different hand positions, like web slinging, milk out the fridge and like too lazy to get up to pick up the controller, web slinging the controller. That's literally how I felt like, ooh, there's just flood of emotions and there's just curiosity and I just want to figure out all the ins and outs of sex. I thought I was the man. I thought I was the maintenance man. I thought I was Mr. Raw Land the law i thought i was peter piper coming with the pipe to plumb to fix the leakage you feel me like i felt like the whole nine you feel me like i felt like him him at the him and neutron until one faithful evening after a particularly romantic date we're coming back to her place i'm just like praying that her roommate's not there she puts the key out she opens the door i'm like yes roommate's not there you know what time it is um and then you know it wasn't long before the hands start handing our lips close the distance and we start fogging up the windows you know what i'm saying <laughs> and i know this sounds all sexy on some 50 shades of gray shit but i tell you it was not deep down i was fighting for my life all right i was fighting demons because for whatever reason i noticed like i just couldn't get it up I could not get it up like my imagination couldn't get it up and you know I tried to go to that place you know that place with like the picture perfect images of those sites you go to and you kind of store a repertoire of like okay that's what gets me off that didn't work you know what I'm saying her hands couldn't get it up the foreplay couldn't get it up like remind you this is the girl of my dreams like this is the queen this is a beautiful gorgeous woman fully naked in front of me like ready for me and not even the thought of that could get me up like she even 
got on the knees. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like the gawk gawk, 9K, the hawk tour. <laughs> Couldn't even get it up, man. Like I was soft as a baby's bottom, bro. Like this is not my worst ED experience, but it's up there. This is like top five worst. This is like nightmare fuel. I don't wish this on my worst enemy, man. And I was soft as a baby's bottom, man. And I just can't describe how embarrassed I was. And like even worse, I could tell she was embarrassed too. And then came the four dreaded words that no man wants to hear during sex, which is, baby, is there something wrong? <laughs> or even worse, baby, is there something wrong with me? And I was like, oh, hell no. I already know what this was. I had seen horror stories and heard horror stories. And I was like, not me. I ain't the one. So I braced for impact, took a deep breath. And I told myself, don't panic. Looked her in the eye and did some light skin player shit. I looked her in the eye, grabbed her hand to comfort her and told her that, baby, everything is okay. I just had a long day. I didn't get enough sleep. I was a little tired. But I promise everything is going to be okay. And yeah, I shrugged it off as like a one-off event and she bought it. She bought it. I ain't gonna lie. I, I guess I sold that shit like a snake oil salesman. And she was like, it's okay, baby. It's okay. And I told her like, it'll never happen again. It was just a freak accident. And yeah, little did I know I was lying through my teeth. <sighs> but when it kept happening again and again, I knew something had to change. Man, I tried everything. Like I tried those special breathing exercises where... <laughs> It looks like you're hyperventilating or you're having an asthma attack and that you need CPR. But apparently it helps with oxygenation of the blood cells and blood circulation to the pelvic floor so that you can stay aroused longer. That shit ain't work. I even tried like tantric practices from the Kama Sutra, deep dives into Eastern and Chinese medicine and philosophies that help you be present in the moment so that I can fully appreciate my girlfriend's beauty at the time so that I can maintain an erection. That shit didn't work. I even, this is so embarrassing, I even bought like a dick ring. If you don't know about that, it's literally like a ring that is tight and you put it around your penis, you know what I'm saying, your pee pee. And it keeps the blood literally like stuck inside your pee pee so you stay hard. That kind of worked, but it was so fucking impractical. It was like fucking me having to bring around a cane or bring around a porta potty every time I take a shit. Like, yeah, it got the job done, but if I really have to have all these accessories and shit just to have sex as a healthy 19 year old, like, am I even? a man and that's that's what really hit me was me questioning my self-worth me questioning my value as a man like i didn't feel like a man and when it just got worse and worse and it wasn't getting better and i could just tell her attraction just slowly draining from her eyes and it just it just shook me to the core and the breaking point for me was when my roommate agreed to give me and my girlfriend the room for the night and it was supposed to be this romantic thing like i got red wine put like rose petals leading up to the top of the bunk bed and there's like marvin gay like sexy music playing and candle shit and literally i somehow convinced her to watch with me just so i could get it up and we could have sex and that barely worked even with the I could barely get it up and keep it up and I could just tell like in her eyes just the interest and attraction just draining through my eyes as she just felt unloved unlusted after and unappreciated and as bad as it felt for her it felt 10 times worse for me but mama ain't raised no bitch so one last concerted effort to redeem myself and restore my fractured sense of masculinity I took a deep dive into the internet one last time and that's when I discovered the weird 2016 self-improvement space it was a scary space and mind you this is before Hamza first man to Andrew Tate <sighs> all I had was random skinny dudes with beards divorced middle-aged men with bubble guts and bodybuilders with back acne the size of craters telling me to do push-ups and stop touching in my wee wee <laughs> it was a shit show but it was exactly what i needed there was hope finally your boy's making some headway so i enthusiastically kept on chugging i looked everywhere i looked into supplements i looked into fitness i looked into diet i looked into nutrition i looked into mental health and how anxiety can affect your libido i even went through this phase where i strongly considered taking viagra and cialis although i'm glad that i did not go down that rabbit hole and then on one particularly deep dive on some reddit forum or some shit i discovered nofap and the nofap community 
and the people were just going about all of the problems of their sexual frustration, how they had embarrassing moments where they couldn't perform in bed. And I just felt seen and spoken to. And immediately I knew that this was my tribe. So although this piqued my interest, I wasn't completely so because mind you, I'm coming off the cusp of the heat of the 2016 leftist woke movement where they literally teach you in sex ed that master is completely normal and recommended and mind you this is like where blockbusters like american pie and sex in the city shit are very popular so it's completely normalized to be having sex and master and all that shit so i was definitely hesitant to say the least anywho regardless of all the doubts and objections i figured what else am i gonna do i got a lot of frustration i got a lot of free time so i'll give it a shot I hopped on no fat harder than a kangaroo on crack and yeah it was a journey but in about two years I mastered it and it was a lot of ups and downs but that is a video for another time so yeah things ended up working out pretty good like not only did it fix my ED it fixed my ED like so good that um your boy went from being terrible at sex to being decent to bring pretty good like like pretty fucking good to the point where women were actually hitting me up for sex and like not on some like okay just have sex to get a relationship no they were hitting me up for sex even though i didn't promise them commitment even though there wasn't a connection i was pretty much a reliable booty call but unbeknownst to me even though this was fun at the time i was slowly digging my hole of dissociating myself from relationships and intimacy and i was making it hard and hard for me to be emotional available in relationships which will come back to haunt me in the future so you are wondering what are the negative side effects Cartesia all I see is pluses as far as the eye can see <laughs> and I'm glad you all asked fapping is nothing more than a glorified habit and with all habits the best way to beat them is not to beat yourself up it is to replace them <laughs> and like any red-blooded horny 19 year old who just lost his virginity a couple months ago ago i replaced fapping with an equally worse or i might say 10 times worse habit womanizing because my immature neanderthal lizard brain figured well all this sexual energy had to go somewhere right and instead of channeling that precious energy that prana energy that life force energy into my purpose and my goals into my dreams no 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 instead i wasted hours days weeks months years into countless sexual encounters countless meaningless hookups and casual sex and upping my body count instead of upping my character instead of upping my finances instead of upping my fitness I was just up in the skull you know what I'm saying I was just trying to get some more I was on some future shit you feel me baby Pluto not proud of them days and if you're not careful about how you go about nofap it can set you up to fail because the worst part about nofap is that you actually get more testosterone which by association makes you more attractive to women so what happens is you get positively reinforced for being a hoe which gives you more motivation to chase tail which in the long run is a recipe for disaster as you never get your priorities straight and you constantly focus on chasing women because that's what you're rewarded for and that's what nofap is making it easier for you to pursue and to be honest i don't know which is worse like being the dude who compulsively jerks off occasionally but is still diligently working towards his goals or the guy who has like a 200 day nofap streak and is on semi retention but is just channeling all that energy to chase tail yes you're having sex with real actual women that you can flex on the haters or increase your social status but at the end of the day you still made zero progress to towards your goals you still have brain fog and you still feel regret and shame in the morning when you wake up next to that wildebeest whose name you don't even know and whose uber is on the way because you don't want to be seen in public with her it's definitely a tough cookie to crack and it's a hard choice that every man on his journey has to decide for himself but it's true what they say like people say oh like i don't want to do no fat because it's gonna make me super horny and actually that is true being on no flap does make you horny but there's a big if the if is if you are not transmuting that into a creative 
passion into a talent or into a craft. If you're just on no fap and then you're also with no goals and no purpose, like niggas be on no fap, but also no goals, no purpose, no mission, no dreams, no ambition in life, and then wondering why they have no results. Like, don't just be on no fap and then be a nobody. Like, be on no fap for a reason. Be on no fap towards a mission in life. Like, if you are just on no fap with no mission or goals in life, you're going to end up actually being on a path of destruction, on a path of distraction, and you're actually going to cause unnecessary damage to yourself, to the women in your life, as well as build an unhealthy relationship to sex, to women, which is going to cause unnecessary pain and it's going to cause you to postpone you reaching your goals in life. And that's actually how it affected me negatively in my life and negatively impact my view on women and especially high quality women. It ruined my chances because I was not directing my nofap energy in the beginning towards a purpose or a creative outlet. It just ended up making me more horny. So what happened was, I would ruin a good thing with a good girl because I would rush things too fast to the bedroom because I wasn't jerking off. My only sexual outlet was through sex. So I was just super horny and I would try to seal the deal on the first date. Now, hold on. I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't try to escalate things as a man because it shows commitment on her part and it shows her interest level. However, I was being a little too thirsty. I was being a therm and that ruined a lot of relationships with potential good girls for me because I sexualized them, objectified them to the point that it just stripped them of any other abilities or good qualities that they had, at least in their eyes. And even if she did fold and we did end up having sex, often that would lead me to naturally maybe not appreciating her as much. And then she would feel unloved and unappreciated. And then self-sabotaging happens. And then as a result, relationship not ends up working out as that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the worst part about it is that it made it almost impossible possible for me to have female friends because I would meet this amazing woman and we had this great chemistry and connection but deep down I would know that she's probably better to have as a friend because there's not perfect alignment and there's never perfect alignment but you just know deep down that maybe this person isn't good for you romantically but instead they would show me some interest, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a good looking dude. We're good looking people, beautiful people. And next thing you know, we have sex and then now there's extra energy involved. Now there's soul ties, now there's attachments. And then now when that breaks off, you know, it doesn't end the right way. And then now I ruin a potential lifelong friend. I ruin a potential bag. I ruin a potential business partner all because like XXX, I couldn't keep my dick my pants. So the question is, is no fap good or bad? And the truth is, there is no right answer. It really depends on what your uses are and what your intentions are for no fap. If you go into no fap like I did to better your sex life, just know and expect that it's going to taint your entire relationship with sex, right? So no fap is going to be used as a tool for better sex for you instead of a tool for being a better you. And if you're cool with that, then just stand on it. Yeah, if I could go back in the past, I would introduce myself to NoFap from a point of trying to increase my sexual discipline instead of my sexual stamina. Because it's all about intention and you can ignore intention, but intention never ignores you. And it's not what you do, it's why you do it. So discover your why and stick to it. If you've enjoyed this video and you feel like you've developed enough trust, smash that link in the description and join our awesome anti-player playbook community, which is all about helping players and men who can't get no play attract a high quality woman being 100% authentically themselves. Also, if you really like this video, but there's some gaps in the theory and you want to figure out like how did I develop my no fat protocol in order to use it even to the benefit of sexual stamina or sexual discipline to this day to the point where I have absolutely broken my addiction to fapping and cure my ED, drop a comment below and I will make a video on that. But as always, stay hydrated, stay breathing in that good ass oxygen. And most importantly, most importantly, stay basic.